This is a fairly straightforward question to read. It simply asks us to name all the attractive or intermolecular forces that must be overcome to perform the given actions. So our plan should be to consider each case with respect to dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, ion-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonding forces. Let's solve the problem. For part A, what forces need to be overcome to boil liquid ammonia? Well, ammonia is a polar molecule with NH bonds. To convince yourself that it is in fact a polar molecule, draw the Lewis structure and notice it has three bonding domains and one non-bonding domain. This gives it a molecular geometry that is trigonal pyramidal. And since nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen, there's an overall dipole moment. All molecules must overcome dispersion forces, so that's one. And since NH3 is polar, dipole-dipole forces apply as well. Finally, the three NH bonds means hydrogen bonding is also a factor. Let's move on to part B. Solid sulfur is made up of all sulfur atoms, so there are no electronegativity differences in the molecule, and it must be nonpolar. S8 must overcome dispersion forces just like all other molecules, but since it's not polar, there are no dipole-dipole interactions. And if the molecule is made up of only sulfur, then there are obviously no hydrogen atoms around, and no hydrogen bonding forces to overcome. Just dispersion forces for this one. For part C, we have cesium iodide, which is an ionic solid, since cesium and iodide have very different electronegativity values. And we have polar water molecules. So the forces that apply here are dispersion and ion dipole forces. Finally, melting potassium metal. Well, since potassium is the only element around, there can be no different electronegativity values, so it must be nonpolar. Dipole dipole interactions are out, and with no hydrogen bonds around, hydrogen bonding is out too. That just leaves us with dispersion forces. Okay, did you answer all parts of the question? Yes, so we're done.